All right, let's check out this word problem, and uh, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. But first, let's quickly read it. Okay, so it says, how many ounces of 5% hydrochloric acid and 20% of hydrochloric acid must be combined? Okay, we're going to create some sort of mixture to get 10 ounces of a solution that is 12.5% of uh, hydrochloric acid. All right, so what's going on again, right? Well, so let's just, you know, again, we're reading it. So we're saying how many ounces we got of a five, we got a 5% hydrochloric acid. All right, that's like one container. And we have 20% of hydrochloric acid. So think about it. So you got like two solutions here, right? Here's like the 5% and we got the 20%. And we don't know how many ounces though, but we want to combine these two together, right? Uh, to get uh, to give us 10 ounces of a 12.5 uh, percent solution. Okay, now what it means to have 5 percent means like here that 5 percent of this little jar, for example, would be hydrochloric acid. That's what that is talking about. And over here, 20 percent of this one. So we're talking about combining two, you know, jars, if you will. Think of it, you know, visually that way. Uh, when we combine these, we want to get uh, one. That's obviously the 5 percent. Um, is going to become stronger if you add 20% to it. And if you add 5% to the 20%, that's going to dilute that down. So we should be able to get a 12.5% solution of hydrochloric acid. But, you know, how much of these two things um, must we add? All right, but so let's go ahead and um, read the question again one more time. Just to make sure, in fact, that this is the scenario. Okay, so how many ounces of 5% uh, hydrochloric acid and 20% hydrochloric acid must be combined to get 10 ounces of a solution that is 12.5% hydrochloric acid? So when we combine these two guys together, what we're looking for is a final little jar here of 10 ounces, okay, at 12.5% hydrochloric acid, all right? This is what we're going for. Now, I know this is 5%, this one, okay? And I know this is 20%, but I don't have the ounces. I don't know how many ounces. That's what the question is um, asking, right? How many ounces of this one and how many ounces of this one? So we're talking about two uh, different variables, two different unknowns, okay? I'm trying to find the ounces of the 5% and how many ounces of the 20%. So we're gonna need two variables here. And any time in algebra you have two separate variables involved, uh, that you need to be thinking about uh, systems of equations, systems. Okay, so this is in fact a system word problem, and uh, if you uh, kind of like were able to figure that out before we even got into this, well then that's excellent. Okay, all right. So um, let's go ahead and assign our variables, and I got a model here, a table here, but um, even this little kind of you know, uh, writing out this little scribble scratch, this little jars, any kind of visual thing that kind of helps you understand what's going on, that is a, uh, a model, okay? You could have done this differently. You could have made a made this neater, but I'm kind of working in these little areas. But now let's go ahead and sign our, our variable. So how about we let X equal to the number of ounces we need of this 5% solution, okay? So in order to create this 12.5%, we're going to uh, let X equal the number of ounces of the 5% solution we're going to need, and then we'll let y, okay, equal the number of ounces of the 20% solution. Okay, so let's let our variables um, uh, represent the number of ounces of each type because that's, in fact, what the question is asking. How many ounces of the 5%? Okay, well, let's let a variable represent that. And how many ounces of the 20%? So let's let a variable represent that. And that's um, um, really important in algebra and algebra word problems is you should let your variables rep obviously represent the unknown in the problem. Okay. All right. So now with mixture problems, it's very, very uh, typical uh, to build a table. Always keep a table um, in mind in terms of algebra word problems. They come in super handy. And uh, let's just review again. X is the number of ounces of the 5% solution, and Y is the number of ounces of the 20% solution. Let's take a look at how you would want to organize uh, this table. So the first thing I have here is the kind of solution. Well, what kind of solutions are we dealing with? Well, we got a 5% solution. We have a 20% solution, okay? And then, obviously, we're going to end up with a 12.5% solution. Now, 
uh, ounces of the solution, okay? Well, I don't know how many ounces of 5% uh, solution. That's part of the question, right? I don't know how many ounces of this 5% solution that we're going to need, okay? But we're going to figure that out. So that's our variable X. How many ounces of the 20% solution? Well, that's our variable Y, okay? And then how many ounces of this 12.5% uh, solution? Well, we know that we want 10 ounces, okay? So that's why we have a 10 in there. All right, now how many ounces of acid? Now remember, the solution is the entire like jar, okay? So right down here, if this is, this right here would be like say 12, 0.5%. It's not the entire, this is this whole thing is the solution. This is the amount of acid in it, okay? So um, let's take a look at this first one. So if I have a 5% solution, okay, how many, whatever ounces I have uh, of it, the total solution, how many ounces of acid? Well, which is multiply 5% by that solution, okay, the total ounces, and I would get that. So of course, I'm going to turn 5% uh, into a decimal. So 0 0.05 times this um, number of ounces of solution would be the amount of acid I would have in that uh, solution. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. So uh, here, that's 0.05x. And then over here, this 20% uh, sol uh, solution, okay, 20% acid, how many ounces of acid in that solution? Well, it would be 0.20, okay, 20% of the number of ounces of that total solution, which is Y ounces. So that's 0 0.220Y. Uh, and then here, uh, how many um, ounces of acid do I have in this 12.5% solution? If I have 10 ounces, well, I'm just going to take this 12.5%, Convert it to a decimal, it's 0 0.125, multiply it by 10. That's exactly how many ounces of acid I have, okay? All right, now, I'm pretty much organizing everything I know about the situation in this table. Now, the next step here, okay, is that we need to build some equations. And because we're dealing with two different variables here, X and Y, you're going to need two equations. You just not get, You can't just have one equation. Uh, we're going to need two equations because we have two variables. Again, we're going to be dealing with a system. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some relationships that we know. All right, well, here, the first one is x plus y is equal to 10. Well, if I'm going to take some, uh, this 5% solution, and I'm going to add it to the ounces of this 20% solution, well, I know the total, when I get done with this, I'm going to end up with 10 ounces. Okay, so that's what I know. I need to... Um, add some amount of the 5% and some amount of the 20%, but when I add these together, guess what? You're going to get 10, right? So that's one uh, equation, and hopefully you're able uh, to see that. All right, now how about the acid? Well, the acid's the same thing, okay? Um, this amount of acid that uh, we have in the 5% that we're going to be adding, okay, with this ounces of solution, uh, plus this amount of acid from the 20% is going to, uh, in total, end up to be this uh, total amount of acid right here. So we can basically use the same idea. And this is the amount of acid uh, in the 5% solution uh, that we're going to be adding. This is the amount of acid in the 20% solution. But we'll end up with this amount right here. That would be the 12.5% per percent um, of that 10 ounces in that final solution. So if you're kind of a little bit confused, make sure, you know, go back and review, think about it. Um, again, mixture problems, in fact, are a little bit confusing. All right. So if you're a little bit confused, that's kind of normal, but you're going to encounter mixture problems in algebra. I can assure you. All right. All right. So now if you got your bearings, uh, what we have to do is now solve this system. Okay. So what's going on here? We have two equations and two variables, x and y, x and y. So this is a system, all right? So now you need to know how to solve linear systems, and we're talking about the substitution method, the linear combination method, elimination method, etc. all that kind of good stuff. All right, now let's get right uh, to it. And the first thing, uh, let's just focus now on this problem as a system. So we have x plus y is equal to 10, 0 0.05x plus 0.20y. Uh, 0 0.20 times y is equal to 1 point, uh, 0.125 times 10. So hopefully I'm not misspeaking here. And now we can just concentrate on the system. So the first thing is, you know, we see these decimals and they're kind of bugging us, right? 
So you're like, you know what? Let's just get rid of these uh, decimals. So how can I get rid of these decimals? What can help us out? Well, let's just multiply this entire equation by 100. Now, when you're dealing with systems, you can um, you can do this. You're allowed to, uh, to multiply the, an entire uh, equation by the same number. As long as you multiply both the left and right hand side, you're not going to break it. You're just going to make it look different, right? And what I want to do is just get away from the decimals and work with a nice uh, integer whole uh, numbers if we can. So if we multiply by 100, I know I'm going to be able to uh, get rid of these guys right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just making this problem easier, right? Uh, you could work, you could use the decimals and work with them, but you know, we try to work smarter and not harder. All right, so this what um, is the consequences of multiplying by 100 when I multiply this line in the system or that uh, particular equation by 100, you get this, okay? And I much rather work with this than the decimals. Okay, so at this point, you have your choices, whether you want to use the substitution method or the elimination method. In other words, you could solve for X or Y. And, uh, you know, for those of you that want to just kind of practice your systems right now and want to try a different technique than what I'm doing, then that's perfectly fine. Actually, I encourage you to do that. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the elimination and combination method. Now, if you're uh, struggling with any of this stuff, uh, just check out uh, my videos in my algebra uh, playlist on systems. I cover uh, systems pretty thoroughly. But if you really want to master this, you definitely, you know, uh, I would suggest like my algebra one course and really, really get get into this stuff pretty deeply. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative five because if I can get a negative five right here, okay, then I can eliminate these x variables. Again, I don't want to digress too much and turn this into a whole lesson on systems. Okay, make sure you know how to solve systems. So, but I am kind of explaining this. So I want a negative five right there. So I'm gonna multiply this entire top equation by negative five. And again, I could do that, but I gotta multiply everything by negative five. So what does that look like? Okay, well, I'll end up with a negative five X there, a negative five Y there, and then this 10 turns into negative 50. Now, I can uh, go ahead and uh, do this elimination or combination method. I'm going to add down in a column manner, and when I do that, these guys go away, and that's exactly what I wanted, okay? And negative 5 plus 20y, positive 20y, is 15y, and negative 50 plus 125 is 75, and now I could solve for uh, a y by dividing both sides of the equation by 15, and I get y is equal to 5. Okay, so we're almost there, and now I need to go get uh, x, right? So I have y, so we have two variables. So we can use any equation that we had in the system, okay? So I'll use this one, x plus y uh, is equal to 10 to solve uh, for x. Now that I know that y is equal to 5, I could just replace this y with this 5, okay, to solve for x. And that's what I'm going to do right here. So I have x plus 5 is equal to 10, and of course, when you solve that, Nice, lovely equation. You get x is equal to 5. All right, so we are done solving the equation. x is uh, equal to 5, and y is also equal to 5. But what does this represent? Well, remember, x and y represented the amount of uh, solution, the ounces of solution that we need to make this 12.5% uh, uh, acid solution at 10 ounces. So effectively, we're going to need 5 ounces of the 5% solution combined with five ounces, right? This is our X and Y of the 20% solution. That's what's required to get 10 ounces of a 12.5% acid solution, okay? And uh, if you were able to do this problem all on your own without any assistance, I must give you a big smiley face, an A plus, a 100%. And matter of fact, I think I'm gonna give you like four stars because uh, mixture problems are a little bit confusing and uh, typically give a lot of students um, trouble. But if you got this all right on your own, that's pretty awesome. Matter of fact, I if I was your teacher, I would just say, just take the textbook home and I'll see you next year. Uh, you're probably watching that guy on YouTube. That's why you're doing so well in your math course. But listen, um, in all seriousness, no, in all seriousness, if you did, uh, you know, get this right, you know, that's very, very good. But uh, listen, algebra word problems is just, you know, they're part of algebra, okay? So don't shy away from them. Uh, you got to embrace them, okay? 
And the way you embrace them is by practicing this stuff. Right? There's no other way to learn anything other than actually you know, uh, doing the work and practicing. So I would encourage you to practice more where prompts. If you go into my um, pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, you'll find several other videos, other word prompt videos that I really uh, highly encourage you uh, to uh, check out, okay, if you want to get better at algebra word prompts. But hopefully this particular video you found uh, interesting and helpful. And if that's the case, please consider this uh, smashing that like button. That helps me out. And again, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I have over a thousand videos on my channel. Um, you know, my goal, my mission, what I strive for is to try to make math clear and understandable. Nobody should be failing math these days, but you got to do your part. You got to work hard, take notes, talk to your math teacher, you know, uh, you know, take that initiative. But if you need more um, help outside of your class, well, then you know, please, you know, watch it. If you like my teaching style, uh, you know, check out all my videos, watch other people's videos. But if you want my best math help, you'll always find that in my math help program. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.